1014年現在ヨークはスベンを率いるデンマークバイキングの支配下にあった I'm not、really、keeping track of the years. How long has this war been going on for? バイキングたちはその商人としての役割も担っていた。Thor's would have been very displeased. お情けで奴隷を解放できるほど。Is that what he's after? Episode 21 reunion. もう十一年も経った。There's like no better way to make a character immediately seem great. あの時、どう look at Leaf? なければ、わしらは無事ではすまなかった。He's still living in, from that day. He's still living in that day. Thor's influence cuts so deep. And it makes total sense. I mean, how do you witness that kind of glory without being permanently changed? What exactly is Leaf trying to do? Oh my god, and they're showing up at the same time. What kind of mission are they on? <laughs> It's like you see the ghost. Yeah. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Ask that cuts a memorable figure. Little、uh, older and <laughs> battle, more battle weary. How quickly will he, he recognize Thorfinn, though? That would be smart. This dude has growing influence. I've learned this from a series of bad relationships. <laughs> There's a very cunning way to be antagonistic, used by manipulative masterminds across the globe. You do malicious things under the guise of kindness. You can try to put people in a situation that you know is unfavorable to them. For example, people have more ethics than you or have more investment than you, and you're cunning. You know where their breaking points are and the things they're not willing to stand are. So, what you can do is you can push them into a situation where, on the surface, you're doing something charitable, you're doing something giving. And you're putting them in an awkward situation where they can't win. But then, if they try to protest or do the opposite of what you're suggesting, what you've offered, they become the villain at face because they're the ones not willing to compromise or they're the ones breaking the peace. For Sven right now, giving land to Knut is a silent punishment because it's robbing him of his power, and Knut knows that he needs power literally to survive. Yet, if he were to reject the offer, he would look like the ungrateful one in the eyes of the public, and it would give Sven a reason to do what he always wanted to do, which was. Which is to take advantage of them. It works especially well for agreeable people because agreeable people will not be comfortable with the negotiation and will take an offer like that in the hopes of promoting peace and you know, a healthy reciprocal relationship. But that depends on the other person having the same mind. And it's hard for people that are really agreeable to understand that. It's tough because I think there's a real gift to seeing the good in people and having the mind to be willing to sacrifice for the sake of harmony with other people. And I think that will be rewarded in its way. But There's also the very real danger of people who do not play by those same rules recognizing that and exploiting it. Because there is evil in the world. At heart, I think all evil can be understood and therefore forgiven. But it doesn't mean that evil doesn't exist, you know what I mean? And so I think more often than not, agreeable people will eventually fall into the clutches of someone who sees that for weakness. But Sven is severely underestimating Knut and also his crew. I mean, Asklad is going to see right through this as, you know, the cunning. War sage that he is. I think what they might need to do is create a reason why the, the group cannot be separated or find a way to agree but make it work in ways that Sven isn't anticipating. <laughs> Asklad seems to thrive really well in these back against the wall moments. It's sort of what makes him so thrilling. Getting ahead of the narrative. The, the beautiful one. You're gonna get assassinated? A, a fake assassination attempt. False flag. Wait, what? 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 Did he actually get shot? No. What in the. Did he order the crossbow to do a non fatal shot? Or did he actually just kill him? Ask us at all this up, obviously. But what's his angle? He wouldn't. I don't think he would just kill his trunk card like this. There's so much going on right now. I think he's gonna survive. And this is an attempt to get public support or pity. They can try to pin this on Sven. Oh, and Leaf witnesses modern day Thorfinn. What a way to get reacquainted. Leaf, Ericsson, you have a tough hill to climb if you have any hopes of rehabbing this kid, this lost soul. Good luck to you. <laughs> You're gonna need it. Godspeed. But then again, I mean, Leaf's been waiting for something he could do to make amends for that terrible day with Thor's. Oh, he's not lying about that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh oh. He's doing all this one handed, too. It's Thorfinn, yes. Does he not recognize Leaf? 
Thor Finn. Onto. Yep. Yep. What does this bring out for Thorfinn? This is this got to be so confusing. This is his first like love hug in a long time. His first affection in a very long time. I bet he has some kind of like arm, like mail on or something like that. Oh, there's no mail there at all. My reaction exactly. That looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. That looks pretty. Oh, it's a dummy. Ah. Uh, that poor woman just was such a pawn. Such a pawn. Oh, it's just a slave, so it's alright. <laughs> Who cares? You gotta think big picture. Think big picture. We got big dreams, big plans. Thank you for your service in helping build paradise on Earth. No, you're not. <laughs> Don't even lie. It's all God's fault. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> what are they hoping to do? She's got a full piece of wood in her heart. I don't think they have high quality hospitals in this region. Getting ahead of the narrative. Oh, he actually is talking it out. That's a really positive sign. I, I thought he was just going to flee. Flee from the love. Physically and emotionally. And mentally. Has he ever? He's participated in hell. He still hasn't forgotten the dream, the paradise on earth where people are happy and free. Oh no. Oh, she's still around. It's not too late. It's interesting. He's choosing to focus on the fantasy rather than the, the actual beautiful things he has in his life. Just one form of escapism after another. That's not going to be that simple. It's going to take a lot more than just a simple dockside conversation. You got to keep your expectations realistic. <laughs> Yep, that's the tragedy of it. And there's irony to it, and then it's partly what Thorfinn thought he wanted. He wanted to be a great warrior, well, he became one. Thor's was just shy of catching it, right? Thor saw it. He saw the, the danger. And then circumstances took him away a little bit too quick before he could grab it and, you know, give Thorfinn the values that he really needs. It's so sad because to the audience, I feel like it's so obvious that Thorfinn is just so lost. There's loss aversion happening, to say the least. You know, he's done all these terrible things and he's telling himself he's doing it in the name of getting revenge because revenge is what he thinks will bring him some kind of emotional salvation. But on some level, he knows what's up and hates himself. And so he needs the revenge thing more than ever to believe in. Because giving that up and accepting the, the relationship he actually has with uh, Asklad means coming face to face with all the evil he's done. I mean, Leif Erikson can help, but it's not something he can do alone. And it's definitely not something he can do quickly. I think his best shot is love and patience and keeping his expectations realistic. As much as you want to, you can't undo someone else's trauma. You can just be a good thing in their life and be an outlet for them to lean on when they have moments of reflection or moments of openness. And you hope that the intrinsic rewards of that help people realize that there are other things and that they have hope and that they have a chance and that they have people that love them and will forgive them. And that maybe with that, they can love and forgive themselves, seeing that it's possible. And it's not something to be doing half-assed either. You know, it's not something to be done with expectations because if you wrap your own self up in it, it's a real easy way to get resentful of other people when they're not coming around to you the way that you need. It's always going to be a self journey for everyone, no matter what the circumstance. It's just a matter of, can you give them real goodness and strength and kindness and love while they do that? Leaf doesn't really know what he's in for, but it does seem like he has the dedication and the commitment given that this has become his everything. You know, that moment with Thor's and the regrets and pain he has about that that he's carried for 11 years. I mean, what happens if Thorfinn leaves? You just follow him? Bjorn is still kicking it. <laughs> I like how he just... Explicitly calls them evil plans and it's just cool with that. As long as we're strong, right? <laughs> that was an acceptable answer for Bjorn, the warrior lover. It's not looking great, though. 
Asklet is definitely on the radar now. Rumors and gossip are spreading. That's exactly the plan. Who might want to kill him? Hook, line, and sinker. I'm sure they could also help for the rumors, you know? Just a few well planted gossips will do the trick. Here we go. Yes, indeed. I take an arrow and I shoot it. Very well played. <laughs> that line sums up Aslan so well. Yeah, he's gonna have a, he's gonna have some kind of counterattack, some kind of propaganda counterattack. He's a smart man himself. <laughs> Very suspicious, this guy. He's like praising a little bit too much. Oh, that's a great line. Just a hunch, but I know with 100% certainty. The king already knows. It's obvious. Feed him bad information is more useful. <laughs> what an emotional victory lap this is. Honestly, I would not be surprised if this ends up with Aslan as king. I don't think that's what will happen. He'll get his just desserts at one point or another. This is the life he lives. Luck will run out. But it's not outside the realm of possibility. And now they know where the king lives. Not all warriors need swords. That was a weird time to ask for a duel. He made his cast into a weapon. I mean, Aslet is also injured. He's got a bad leg. Well, credit to him for never, ever backing down, though. What? <laughs> Sorry, I have plans for this duel. <laughs> is he putting Bjorn in as his replacement? Oh, what? What? Why are they doing? Is this like putting him out, of, him out of his misery so he can go to Valhalla? Is that why I asked about the leg? Yeah, I was wondering how he was reacting to Askeladd's confession. This is spoken like someone who actually really cares about it, Asclad, sadly. What a disappointment. Betrayed by someone you put your everything into. Uh, yeah, that was only gonna go one way. Oh god, this is hard wrenching. Oh man, this is awful. I didn't want to watch. Oh, God, that hurt so bad. Was that a mercy from Asclad? Was it a truth? Who knows? Who knows? Do you feel anything? Jeez. And now time for a duel. It's terrifying. He's like glowing. Aslan's not dying in this duel. I mean, that would just be too easy for the character he is. I feel like, just narratively, there's a much bigger hell in store for him, you know, because he's doing all this and he's trying to climb the mountains of greatness to try to become this mythical hero that he's heard about and is waiting for. And tied in with all that is like a, a deep-seated hatred of people who have done him wrong and, you know, desire to perhaps avenge his mom. I guess not too dissimilar from Canute in the sense that they're both willing to dispense with things that are obviously good and obviously right for a vision that they each have of what's necessary for the world, I guess, just themselves. But I think Bjorn's work 
words are going to be somewhat maybe foreshadowing or, or maybe just character commentary where this is a really lonely life. I don't think that there are any rewards to this. I think the rewards are just pain. No matter how powerful he grows, no matter what he achieves, it's never gonna be enough. I mean, he might have moments of glory, he might have moments of extreme satisfaction, but I think this is one of those mountains that you climb only to find that the peak is empty, and along the trail are corpses of all the good things you, you discarded in your attempt to reach the pinnacle. I mean, in some sense, Asclad is a warning for, for Thorfinn, who in the same episode discarded his family, conceptually, for the the idea of paradise in Vinland and, you know, directly connecting that with his plot for revenge against Asclad. Asclad is kind of too far gone at this point, it feels. So the story in some ways seems like the battle for Thorfinn's soul. And that's part of why it's so exciting that Leif has shown up. He actually is someone who is caring and, you know, seems halfway decent to vouch for him or battle for him. As opposed to Asclad, who, you know, maybe has some, some affinity for him, but is not the type to put that above a greater plan. You know, he's just using Thorfinn. I think that's become extra clear from what happened with Bjorn. I mean, Bjorn was, you know, also not a great guy, but definitely the most loyal of people. Although there is a small chance I'm misreading that. And maybe he cared about Bjorn, and maybe this was just him doing what he thought was merciful, since Bjorn's death seemed like a foregone conclusion. But if I had to choose between the two, if I had to make a guess, I would say that while there might have been some pain in Asclad about what happened in this episode, it's going to pale in comparison to the other stuff going on inside of him, which is, you know, kind of ambition and plotting and scheming and his own desires. I don't think he's really going to wallow in it that long. I think that is the kind of thing that might happen later, if ever, when he actually gets what he wants and looks back at what he's done to, to get there. It's a really amazing episode. I just all around, there's so much going on. The plot against the king is really exciting. I thought the last work was good. This one is cool in a different way because the stakes seem a little bit grander in terms of its political scope. And, you know, now we're fighting for kingdoms, basically, as opposed to escaping Thorkel's army, right? And we've had so much terribleness for so long. Leaf showing up is, is really exciting. And I'm, I can't wait to see where that goes.